Hello, welcome to another Cleave Tech Tech Tip. Hopefully you've been watching this series on controllers and modifying the controller and improving your controller and servicing your controller so that everything works nicely as it should. I've also managed to explain some of the features of controllers, busting the myth of the electronic controller. Put a link on the screen up here now. But today we're going to make one final addition to this controller. We're also going to make sure the wiring's all tidy, the casing fits nicely and make a little improvement to help with the reliability and longevity of the controller as well. So join me in a minute after this intro. So before I start adding anything to my controller, I'm going to get the casing put back on the hand throttle part of the controller. Now you can see this casing all does fit fit on, fits on okay, slides over. The addition I did of the anti-brake fits on nicely. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link on the screen now. But I'm not happy with the way the wiring sits down at this end and how it comes out of the handle. So I've made a little trim out here of the framework to give me a little bit of space to get all these wires to sit nicely and come out through the handle. The previous owner had made like three uh, little loops in there. Maybe that came as standard from Palmer, I don't know. I've seen so many of these uh, trigger handles that have had various cutouts put in them. But I'm gonna put them all the wires together and make them come out of one nice little space there. And I'm gonna hold them all neatly in here. Maybe put a piece of heat shrink over the top to hold them all together and stop them from bending so much. So a little bit of stress relief of the wires where they come out through the handle. But to do that, say I needed to trim away a little bit of this frame inside, I'll need to trim a big uh, sort of semicircle out here and a semicircle out of the other side here and slide some heat shrink onto these wires. So I've made a nicer cut out here in the two parts of the handle. Now, good tip for doing that is to open up one half a little bit and I've used this little sanding drum on my rotary tool, my Proxon rotary tool. Uh, really good things, these Proxon rotary tools. I'll put a link in the video description of where you can get them. Fantastic, I've had it many years, been utterly reliable, really powerful, really great tool. Uh, again, I'll put a link where you can get these little sanding attachments. You've probably got plenty of them anyway. This is one of the smaller ones you can get. But I opened up half of it. I opened up the other half a little bit. And then I put both halves of the controller together. And then I sanded them in one go like that to make sure the hole was nice and neat and would match up nicely when both halves come together. A little longer than a few minutes later. Whilst I had the wires off as well to slide the heat shrink tubing onto it, all the wires, I also put a little bit of heat shrink around where the black wire joins these uh, trigger wires here, the wiper arm wires, just to hold them in place here a little bit nicer. They move a little bit better now as well. Uh, again, if you hadn't seen my previous video where I checked those out uh, and showed you that little tip, have a look at the screen now. But clamp that back in. Obviously I had to remove all these other wires, this white wire and the red wire again, and the back wires down here as well. I had to remove all of those um, to slide the heat shrink over the top. So probably something I should have thought about doing whilst I was doing my other videos. No! And slid the heat shrink on at the same time. So I put a little cable tie on there through those holes there to hold the, all these wires together here and then I'm going to slide my heat shrink up here and I'm going to shrink this onto the wires and I'll be back in a mo. 12 seconds later. Heat shrink is now applied at the bottom. Now you can see I've used heat shrink with some glue inside. That helps hold all the wires together, stops them from all sliding about, make sure they're all uh, going to sit nicely in the handle and not be sort of pushed up or pulled down out of the handle. Now I'm not too sure how well you can see it in the video, but you can see there's quite a lot of dirt on this handle here. So I'm gonna give them a little bit of a scrub before I assemble uh, the final handle again. 
the dirt is actually sort of gathered off of your hands and so on in this bit here. So I'm going to give them a little scrub with a toothbrush and some soapy water and I'll be back. A few moments later. So the frame's back in one half of the handle. Handle's all nice and clean. And you can notice I've put a cable tie around this piece of heat shrink, but on the inside of the handle. That way, when the handle fits on, the cable tie is held on the inside there and you can't pull the wires out of the controller because they're held in with a cable tie around this heat shrink here. So the, the heat shrink has a little bit of flex, stops it from rubbing against the plastic uh, handle. And therefore, hopefully these wires will last a lot longer without snapping off uh, at the handle part here. So when you put the handle back together, it's always worth checking that everything moves smoothly and the trigger doesn't catch on anything or you haven't got any wires trapped in the casing here. So have a good look through and make sure nothing's trapped. The trigger moves nicely, doesn't scrape on anything. It returns back to the brake contact as it should. And then we're all good to go to add our thing to the box. So from the title of this video, you may very well have a clue about what we're going to add to this box here. And I say I've drilled a couple of holes here. Well, let me reveal. We're going to add a fan. Why do we add a fan? Well, we don't want to lose our cool, do we? Well, basically, with all these additions we've made to the controller, and especially putting these choke resistors in, and if you haven't seen my choke resistor video, I'll put a link on the screen now, but these could get quite warm. Also, our brake pot could get quite warm. Our transistor could get quite warm. So we want to try and make sure that the performance of our controller remains consistent and doesn't get too hot. So by adding a fan onto our heat sink, we can blow some cold air onto our transistor and onto our heat sink and make sure there's a flow of air going over the top to try and keep everything nice and cool. So why have I got two holes? Well, one hole is for the fan wires. The other hole is for a switch so you can turn your fan off. Now, they don't use much current. You can see this one's 0.15 amps at 12 volts, but that's still a tiny bit of current. And if you want absolute maximum power with your relay on, your full power blast relay, you want to go the fastest you possibly can down the straights, then turn your fan off as well. And then you make sure you get all the power to your car down the straight. So I'm taking my fan here and I've put a little bit of heat shrink over the wires. I basically put the heat shrink where the wires are going to go through the hole in the case down there to make sure that the wires aren't going to rub on the sides of the uh, heat sink on the case or on the aluminium box. Just protects the wires a little bit more uh, from shorting out or catching on the aluminium case. 12 seconds later. So I've threaded my fan wires down through this hole I'd made previously and they come out into the box there. So again, gives me a little bit of room there to connect the wires to where they need to go. It's worth mentioning that the fan, remember, is a 0.15 amps at 12 volts. That's key to remember. And I'll explain why when I finish wiring it up. It's not quite as simple as just connecting these two wires. But first of all, before I connect any more any wires, I'm going to screw the fan down to the top. Now I have this cover here that was laser cut at some time in the past. Um, you can get little metal grills to go over the top. I definitely recommend putting something over your fan because you don't want to accidentally get your fingers caught in it or drop anything into your fan when you're racing. Now I'm going to fix it into place with these little self-tapping screws. And the self-tapping screws are quite handy because they're just a little bit wider than the grooves in the heat sink. And they just literally bite into the edges of the heat sink. So I don't need to drill any extra holes or anything. They will actually just bite into the edges of the aluminium heat sink and hold the fan in place. And it works out quite nicely that this fan matches the grooves in the heat sink. And I can get all four screws in to hold it in place say, with a cover on top. 12 seconds later. So I've screwed this fan down to the heat sink with a cover, a protective cover on top. It's also worth mentioning that the fan is screwed in 
in the direction of blowing air onto the transistor and the heat sink. If you'd flip the fan around the other way, it'd be drawing hot air up and away from the hot heat sink. Whereas in this case, it's going to draw cold air from above and throw it down or force it down onto the heat sink. The reason why I've put the fan just slightly off to the side is because it leaves me room here for adding a switch to turn your fan on and off. 12 seconds later. So switch is mounted in position. Switch is nicely, plenty of room to switch the fan on and off. Let's say the wires come through here. Now it's not just quite as simple as joining the red wire to the positive coming in from the controller and the black wire to the negative coming in from the controller. That would of course work, but we can't guarantee on all tracks being 12 volts. And these type of fans here that are designed for cooling computers and things like that, they're quite sensitive to an increase in voltage. So I found that people that have just connected the fans directly into the power in from their controller, the fans don't tend to last very long because some tracks are 12 and a half, 13, 13.8. Some tracks might even be 14.4 volts I've seen at some tracks. And if you're running 14.4 volts, then the fan is going to be drawing a bit more current than 0.15 amps. So we need to limit that current. So looking, doing a bit of Ohm's law calculation, well, I'll put on the screen now. A lot of boring math later. We can see that at 12 volts, 0.15 amps, then the fan itself is about 80 ohms of resistance. So if the fan is 80 ohms of resistance, then if we are increasing the voltage to let's say 14.4, which is probably the maximum I've seen at most tracks, then we need to increase the resistance to make sure that it doesn't draw any more current. And obviously increasing the resistance sets up a bit of a potential divider. And another way of looking at it is it will drop the voltage back down again to 12 volts. So doing an Ohm's law calculation, we can see that we need 96 ohms. So that's another 16 ohms of resistance. So I just happen to have here a 16 ohm resistor, which happens to be a brown, green, black. So I'm going to add this in series with the red wire before we connect it to the positive coming in from the controller. So the positive coming in from the controller is actually the white wire, if you remember back to my other videos. This is the live wire that's coming in from the positive of the power supply. So this comes all the way in and comes on to this side of the relay here. So that is where I want to connect this red wire, but I'm going to obviously do it through a resistor. The black wire will be connected to the red wire that comes in from the controller because that's actually the brake wire, the negative, that's connected to the negative of the power supply. So I need to make sure that this black wire is connected directly to where the red wire comes in from the power from the power and the plug at this end. I, I want to make sure I connected it to there, not the other side of the switch, because I could end up switching my fan off by accident. But somewhere in between, I need to connect it through this little switch here. So it looks more convenient probably to do that with the black wire. So I'm going to have a negative switch. So I'm going to bring the black wire through the contacts of my switch and then back to this red wire that comes in. And I'm going to take the red wire of the fan, put it through my 16 ohm resistor with a bit of heat shrink over the top and solder it to the white wire that comes in from the controller. And I'll be back in a short while. 12 seconds later. So the fan is wired in. You can see the red and the black wires of the fan coming through here. So the red wire heads off here, goes through the resistor and solders onto where the white wire comes in from the plug. Notice I put a little cable tie around that red wire to stop it wobbling. So it's held on by this big thick white wire here. So it can't wobble off. So it makes a good contact there and can't say break at the joint there. The black wire comes through here round and down onto the switch here. And again, I've put some uh, little heat shrink tubing over the top just to, again, stop the wires from shaking around too much and breaking off at the contacts there. 
Then it comes back here, again, through another little cable tie there that holds all of these wires together on the switch. Again, it stops them from vibrating, moving around, uh, and that black wire joins right on where the red wire comes in from the plug. You can see that colour of red wire coming all the way through there and goes to the top there. I've also put another little cable tie on here, again, just to hold these wires together to stop them from shaking around and again, breaking off at any contacts. So now it's time to test it. So I've connected the plug up to the power supply and I'm going to switch the fan on. And there we have it. We have our fan spinning, gives quite a draft. Let's just try this little chocolate wrapper, blows away. There's quite a bit of a draft going there. Should keep that nice and cool. In fact, actually, it actually feels quite cool already. It feels cooler than it did before. So the very last things I've got to do is tidy up these wires that are coming from the controller here, put the little cable ties back on, put a little cable tie on the inside and outside to stop the wire from being pulled one way or the other. Then I can put the case on. 12 seconds later. Cable ties are done. There's one in there and one on there. That stops the wires from being pushed and pulled out of the box. So I'm going to screw the box on and Bob's your uncle. 12 seconds later. So there we have it. We have quite a fully featured controller. So over the course of the last few episodes, we've added quite a lot to this controller. We've checked it out. We've maintained it. We've made sure that the pivot works nicely. The board is nice and smooth. There's no shorts on the board. We've added quite a lot of extra features to it. We've added a full power relay on and off. We've added a choke, a three stage choke of different values, a resistive choke. We've added anti-brake, an adjustable anti-brake. And we've added a fan to the controller to keep it nice and cool. We've also neatened everything up, made sure it's going to be a bit more reliable than perhaps it was before. And it moves nicely. Oh, we've added the special tweak on the spring as well to stop it from uh, vibrating when you let go. So we've actually done a fair few things to this. And this should be a really, really nice controller for years to come for the owner who can now drive a lot more exotic type cars, a lot more different car types of cars and feel that they can control them more easily. The only thing I might do before giving it back to the customer, I might, if I get a chance, I might 3D print something or I might bend a little bit of aluminium just to mount up here, just to protect this switch and this dial here in case the controller gets dropped onto this front corner here and breaks the circuit board. So it probably does need a little something just to protect that uh, in the event of dropping your controller and breaking it off. I want to thank you very much for watching this series of controller videos. And as I say, you know, if you haven't seen them all, go back and watch them all. Uh, there will be a playlist coming in this corner. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Um, it's an easy way to subscribe. Hit the big C that comes here. And there's going to be plenty more videos coming in the future. I've recorded loads of model car stuff, uh, Revo slot and some other brand of car that I might be building. I've also been recording reviews and also been doing some Cleave Tech Tech Tip Extras, which are special tech tips with things like motor building, setup tips, etc, etc. Things that perhaps I haven't covered on my normal tech tips. So I go into a little bit more depth with my tech tip extras. But they'll be coming soon, so watch out for those. In the meantime, thank you very much. As I say, hit the big C when it appears. Watch my other videos. Have a nice time. Enjoy your racing. And I'll be back again soon.